Good morning. I welcome you this morning, this beautiful spring day. Um, did you have rain here last day? We had quite a rain and lots of hail as well. I don't know if you had hail, but it was quite a storm. Um, it was good to get some, some moisture, though. The gardens were starting to feel a little on the dry side. So much easier to weed, isn't it, when there's lots of rain to help get those weeds out. Welcome to our service of worship on this Sunday, May 15th. To all of you who are here in person at Knox Presbyterian Church in Walkerton and to all of you who are joining us online this morning. Uh, today at Perking, um, please join us for sausage and pancakes. I was downstairs briefly and it smells pretty good there. So I think you'll want to stay and have some lunch uh, at our Perking time and opportunity to have conversation as well. Um, another announcement comes via, I was at Presbytery meeting on Tuesday evening down at Camp Kintail and the folks from uh, Knox Presbyterian Church in uh, King Carden, just down the road, are wanting us to advertise a concert that they were to held two years ago and it had to be cancelled because of COVID. It's now going to happen, hopefully, on Sunday, May the 29th. It's an organ recital. Um, Juno Award winner Ian Sadler, who's a renowned organist, will be in concert at 2 o'clock, 2 till 3.30 on Sunday afternoon. And it says, everyone welcome. Uh, voluntary donation, there are no tickets. And masks are mandatory. So that's Sunday, May the 29th at 2 at Knox, Presbyterian Church in Kincardine. And um, I'm looking forward to, to being at that concert. Um, after a two-year pause, it will be good to have that happening. They had restored their organ just before uh, COVID began and had looked forward to having a, a, a dedication of the rebuilt uh, organ and to have Ian Sadler play for them. And it all had to be canceled and then canceled again. And well, here we are now, two years later. So they wanted to pass that invitation on to others. So there, this morning you've heard that announcement and we'll put it on the bulletin board for you to uh, have the details. Another announcement is that we are very pleased to announce that there are four children now who will be supported fully by, camp, by Knox Church, or will be supported to go to Camp Kintail uh, this summer. And I can tell you from my time down there this week, they're very busy getting everything ready. They're really anxious after two years of not being able to hold in-person camp, getting ready for Camp Kintail to start in the weeks ahead. Um, and further in regards to our support for Camp Kintail, on Sunday, uh, June the 12th, uh, second Sunday in June, at Perking that day, you'll have an opportunity to purchase cookies made by the Sunday School here at Knox, um, which will go to support Camp Kintail, and Perking that day will be in support of Camp Kintail as well. So Camp Kintail support, second Sunday of June, hope that you're able to be here and to share in that activity. I think there's some other announcements online. Please take time to read those announcements. Let us turn to the lighting of the Christ candle. It seems at this time of the year that there's light everywhere because we're getting closer and closer to the summer solstice when the light is brightest. We have a light that's bright like that all the time, the summer solstice brings us light, but we have a light called the Christ candle. It's even brighter than any summer sun will ever see. And as we begin worship this morning, we are reminded that that light is with us to help us find our, our way. Even when the sun is shining brightly, this is a different light, a light that lives within us and helps us find our way. Thanks be to, to God for the light of Christ that is among us always. 
Amen. Let us join together in our call to worship. Praise the Lord. Praise God, all of you angels. Praise God's holy name. In all peoples, praise God's holy name. Young men and women alike, old and young together, with voices united, let us praise the Lord. Let us praise the Lord today as we sing 423. Sing your praise to God eternal. Let us come before God in prayer. Holy God, the first and the last, the beginning and end of all things, you are worthy of praise from all your creation. Sun, moon, and stars praise you. Earth, sea, and sky praise you. Every living thing praises you in its own way. And so we praise you in our human diversity, joining our varied voices with all your creatures in heaven and on earth. You fill our lives with the wonder of your love in Christ Jesus. Your spirit moves throughout the world to reveal your purposes for every living thing. Receive our prayers and our praise for this day, for you are the source of our life and our hope. Holy God, ever three and ever one. Loving God, Jesus commanded us to love one another so the world would know we follow him. Yet we confess we do not always love one another, not the way Jesus loves us. The world has seen our squabbling, our history of hypocrisy, and our lack of compassion for those who don't measure up. Loving God, forgive us. Lord Jesus, continue to love us. Holy Spirit, fill us with love so that the world will witness your love in our words and in our actions. In Jesus' name we pray. 
Amen. Jesus taught us that no one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friend. Christ has laid down his life for us and invites us to love one another as he has loved us. Let us rejoice in his forgiving love and share it with each other day by day. Let us share that love and the peace of Christ with one another. May the peace of Christ be with you and with you. Whoops, I forgot we're doing this first. <laughs> Let's start again. Peace before us. Peace behind us. Peace under our feet. Peace within us. Peace over us. Let all around us be peace. Now, the peace of Christ be with you and with you, and with you, and with you, and with you. It's so wonderful to have the choir once again today. I um, invite them now to share their gift of music with us, a blessing for us all this morning.
That was wonderful. A prayer for God to lead us, and it fits so well with our sermon and our theme for today's worship service. So thank you very much. Just wonderful to have you all there. Do you ever have a dream that actually makes you wake up laughing? Anybody? Have you experienced laughter in your dreams? It's, it's quite strange, isn't it? You wake up and you think, what was that about? And, and probably I don't remember, right? As soon as we wake up, mostly our dreams are gone. Sometimes a little bit reminds, remains and, and we think, oh my gosh, I dreamt that. And we do remember a little bit of it. But one time, I do remember waking up laughing and thinking, what was that for? Well, it must be going to be a good day if I wake up laughing in the morning, hopefully. Do you remember your dreams ever? Sometimes, maybe a little bit of it. Yeah, yeah. You know, I lost my dog, um, Sally, three months ago now. And I had a really strong dream recently. And she was right beside me. I could, you know... I could hear her breathing just below me on the floor where she always slept. But of course it was a dream. But I guess that was reminding me that I was really missing her. For sure. Sometimes um, we dream about things that have happened to us. And sometimes our dreams are very different from what you know, really happens uh, to us. Everything is, is different somehow in our dreams. Um, and, and maybe that's why we wake up laughing sometimes thinking, oh, that's so silly, can't be that way. But sometimes I have had dreams that seemed uh, really wonderful and everything in the whole world was just different than it was. And maybe it was more like the way it should be, the way God would like it to be. If God wanted to show you something in a dream, what might that be? A peaceful world? A world where we could all get along with one another? Where we didn't have people dying with guns and wars and other very sad things? I think I would like that kind of a dream. One of the Bible stories, I'm not going to be reading it today. We're not going to hear that story today. But it's a story about Peter and he has a dream. God showed Peter in a dream something that really changed him forever. In that dream, God said that a stranger was going to visit Peter and that he should pay attention and he should go with that man, go and meet that man's friends and his family. And God wanted Peter to welcome that man and his family. He wanted Peter to show love and kindness to that man. So I guess what God was saying in Peter's dream was, here's something I want you to do. Go and love this stranger. Go and welcome this stranger. Do you ever wonder how God speaks to us or gives messages to us? Do you think God calls us up on the phone? Oh, I should do it this way, right? That's how we phone nowadays, not so much this way. Or, or does, does God send us a message in the mail or a text on your iPhone? No, probably not, right? But maybe, maybe God speaks to us, sends us messages in ways that we don't always pay attention to. Maybe that text that you got yesterday was kind of a message from God. Maybe it was somebody asking for some help. Maybe that was God speaking to us. We don't know, but we could think about it. So I wonder if in the world around us, not just thinking of technology, but that God gives us messages all the time in the flowers that are blooming in our gardens, in the birds that are singing, in the air. I think God maybe does give us messages, but we're not always paying attention to those messages. Maybe our friends, when they come and 
share their smiles and their stories. Maybe that's God speaking to us as well. But we have to really listen with our ears, really watch with our eyes, and really feel with our hearts. What is God's message in all of those things? How does God speak to us? Well, yes, God speaks to us through the Bible and the words that we share in church. But I think there's many ways that God speaks to us. And I think we could all be a little bit more watchful and listening and feeling. And we'll hear God's messages a little better. And I think underneath all those messages are these words. Tying all those messages together are these especially important words. Love one another. And that's what ties all our scripture readings this morning. Ties them all, to, all together. So be listening for God's messages around you. And as you are with your friends and family, be listening. What's God saying to you today? Amen. And now I invite the children to go to Sunday school, something we haven't been able to do for a while, but are so thankful for now. See you later. Our responsive reading this morning is a psalm of praise, Psalm 140. Let's read responsively. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights above. Praise him all his angels. Praise him all angels. Praise him sun and moon. Praise him all you shining stars. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for at his command they were created. Praise the Lord from the earth, you great sea creatures and all ocean depths. You mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars. Kings of the earth and all nations, you princes and rulers on earth. Young men and women, old men and children. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His splendor is above the earth and the heavens. And he raised up for his people a horn, the praise of all his faithful servants of Israel, the people close to his heart, praise the Lord. Amen. From John's uh, letter, the book of Revelation, reading in chapter 21, verses 1 to 6. In this uh, passage, uh, John is speaking about the fact that something new is about to happen. So he begins by saying, Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, adorned for her husband, and I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them as their God. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more. For the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also he said, write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. And then he said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give water as a gift from the spring 
of the water of life. Amen. A new thing God is doing. In the Gospel of John, we encounter a new commandment. Reading in chapter 13, verses 31 to 35. When Jesus had, or when, um, when Peter, it was Peter, Judas Iscariot, when he'd gone out, this is, I should back up and, and give you some context here. Um, this is the continuing story of the Passover time. And they're moving along now towards Jesus' death and resurrection. And um, Judas has now left them and Jesus is now going to give them a new message. So when Judas had gone out, Jesus said this, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer you will look for me, as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another, just as I have loved you. You also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us join together to sing 476 Amigos de Cristo. We are friends of the Lord.
that's not usually how we begin a sermon, but today we are. And thanks so much to Karen and to the choir this morning for singing what is a chant, basically. Um, and perhaps it was a new piece for you? Yes? Yeah, a new piece for you. Um, well, this song is a favorite of mine, and it comes from uh, the hymn writer and gifted musician John Bell from the Iona community in Scotland. And it reflects the scriptures that we've read this morning and even more. The harmonies are beautiful and, and actually quite simple. It's a piece that lifts our spirits and reminds us of the promises in scripture. And it may be a new song to all of you, or maybe it's one that you've just not heard for some time. We're going to hear it a few times this morning. It's always good to sing a new song to the Lord and to share the spirit and the meaning of the words and to glorify God in our worship time. For a little more than two years now, life has been limited, hasn't it, by the realities and the restrictions of the COVID pandemic. But we're moving forward into a new time, hopefully back to a more normal time when we can return to our daily lives. It's true, we're moving forward cautiously and also with some new learnings. In our personal lives and our faith life, we find ourselves doing and thinking in new and different ways. I know that new things can be sometimes off-putting we may not be sure whether we like the new ways or if they're even appropriate. New things and new ways can move us, however, beyond our comfort zones, cause us to think outside the box, as we say. And that can be frightening, but also exciting at the same time. are happening here at Knox with the return of the choir, in-person Sunday school, perking after church, and plans for more in-person activities in the weeks ahead. As well, the search committee continues to work together in our search for the new minister that God is preparing for Knox. Imagine the new challenges that will come with welcoming a new minister. New ways of leading, new challenges, exciting new adventures in the months ahead. We will need to be open to new ideas, new dreams, and new possibilities. So as we prepare for this new time, we pray that God will help us to be open and ready for the exciting new things that will begin. On Tuesday evening this past week, the Presbytery of Grey Bruce Maitland met at Camp Kintail. This was our first in-person meeting in more than two years. We enjoyed a wonderful dinner prepared by the camp kitchen staff, and Teresa, the camp director, welcomed us to the camp, and she and the staff led the evening worship. Teresa told us that the staff had been very busy this past week, hosting the school programs. And because of COVID, this has all been on pause for two years. So there was a great excitement and gratitude for the return of the school programs. <coughs> and the staff are busy preparing for in-person camp programs to begin after two years of somewhat limited programs. COVID continues to require some safety precautions, and so, of course, there's some continuing uncertainty, isn't there? Mostly, though, there's excitement, a sense of hopefulness for the new season ahead. 
and we're thankful that the camp will return to a mostly normal summer schedule. Some camps are already filled to capacity. Some things will happen in a different way. Sometimes there may be some complaints. Why can't we do it the way we always used to do it? Ever heard that before? Sometimes we see the good in some of the new things. Sometimes we learn and grow and change for the better. scripture reading from John comes from that part of the story when Jesus is starting to get his followers ready for a really big change that's going to take place in their in his life and in theirs it's not that they haven't been through changes before they have the biggest one was probably when they answered Jesus call to leave behind their regular lives and livelihoods and to follow him on a journey of teaching and preaching and healing, and depending on the kindness of hospitality and of strangers. But now, Jesus is preparing them for an even bigger change, for another new thing. And this time, he's probably pretty sure that they're not going to see it as a positive change that they can easily embrace. You see, Jesus knows that he's soon going to die. And so as gently as possible, he says, Little children, I am with you only a little longer. What? I can imagine them saying. You can't leave us. You're our leader. We are followers. It's working well. You can't leave us now. But Jesus does not change his mind. If he could change his mind, if it was his choice to make. And so he says, where I am going, you cannot come. You need to remain here to continue my work. I won't be with you in the same way. You're right about that. But I will be with you still by the Spirit of God in you and among you, and between you and around you. I won't be physically with you, but you will be my disciples still. And so I give you a new commandment, he said, that you love one another just as I have loved you. You also should love one another. And by this, by this love, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love one for another. My experience, my own experience of living in Christian community, whether it's at camp or in a church setting, is that it's a wonderful opportunity to learn together what it really means to love one another as Jesus has loved us. In the midst of challenges and changes, in the context of trying new things, learning new songs and skills and games and stories and making new friends, we get the chance to live out Jesus' new commandment to love one another as we live and worship together 
in Christian community. Today, and in the weeks ahead, I hope that you will join me in praying for Camp Cantel this summer, for all the campers who will be there, for the leaders in training who will be ex arriving shortly, for the counselors and for all the staff who are even now arriving, for the volunteers and for all who visit the camp. And if you have an opportunity this summer, go to Camp Cantel and experience all the new things that have happened at Camp Cantel over recent years. I'm praying for something new and wonderful in the lives of each of those people. A new friend, a new learning, a new experience of being loved, a new assurance of God's presence and care, a new call from Christ, and a new response of faith. I am praying for something new in the Christian community that forms there at Camp Kintail. New cooperation and patience and understanding, new bonds of love and friendship and new unity in their own ministry and mission. And I'm praying for the same things for our church community here at Knox. May God help us to welcome, to meet, to love, and to encourage one another in Christian community right here in this place right here in this community of Walkerton. And may everyone know, may everyone know that we are disciples of Jesus because we have love for one another. And if you'd like to join in now as we sing together, Behold. Thank you so much for helping me with my message today. The season of Easter is unfolding, while the gifts of spring also remind us of God's generosity in Christ and in all creation. May the gifts we offer show our gratitude for God's goodness to us and for the hope for new life that we have in Christ Jesus our Lord. Let us worship God with our offering. Generous God, we bless you for your gift of life renewed through Christ's love and through springtime growth in fields and in gardens. Bless the gifts that we bring and make them signs of hope and renewal in the world we serve. In the name of Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. As we come to our prayer time this morning, we continue to pray for the people of Ukraine and for those who are seeking to come to their aid and to bring an end to this horrendous war that we have seen unfolding over the past number of weeks. Let us pray with all our hearts that there will be an end to war and a return to peace and wholeness in our world. And as we have witnessed once again another mass shooting in Buffalo across uh, the border, just across the waters from our own country. Um, 
the senseless loss of life in Buffalo yesterday, uh, we pray also that we may come to realize the need for new ways of living together in peace and new ways of understanding one another, new ways of overcoming hatred with kindness, with love, and with ways in which we can find ourselves living together as God would have us live. Let us join in prayer. Lord our God, you have given us so many wonders in this world you created. And we thank you for spring sunshine and for refreshing rains, for colors exploding in the blossoms opening, grass greening and gardens sprouting. Thank you for all the signs of new life around us in this Easter season. Make the earth fruitful in this growing season so that food will be plentiful for the hungry. God of new life, we pray that we might learn to care for our planet as your gift, as your gift to us before it's too late. We pray for scientists everywhere and all those who work tirelessly to teach us how to look after the environment, renew their energy for the responsibilities they carry. We pray for leaders in government and business and communities that they will make care for the earth a priority for the sake of generations to come. Inspire each of us to do all we can, no matter how small or insignificant our efforts may seem. To walk more respectfully on the face of your creation. God of the small and insignificant, as well as the powerful and influential, we thank you for our families and friends who offer us love and encouragement as we move through life. We pray for those families and communities whose lives have been shattered by days of war and destruction, those who worry about safety each day and what the future holds for them. We pray especially for Ukraine, for the people and communities that have been forever changed. Give to them strength and hope to face an uncertain future. May they know your sustaining presence in these days. Guide all those with decision-making power to consider the lives of the vulnerable as very precious and make policies that protect them for the future. We pray for peace in Ukraine. God of the vulnerable, we pray for all those whose future is uncertain, for those facing illness or waiting for treatment. We pray for those who are mourning the loss of someone dear and those who may be celebrating happy times of birthdays and anniversaries and weddings. We pray also for those who do know hunger and despair and for those who are facing danger or discrimination every day. Empower us with your spirit to reach out to those in need in this community and in places distant from us so that we can make your love tangible in their lives. In Jesus' name. God of our Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for this community that gathers in Jesus' name, for the warmth and the welcome that's offered here, for friendship and faithfulness discovered, for learning and leadership shared with each other. Thank you for the hope that rises in us through the resurrection of your son, Jesus Christ. And so make us expressions of that hope to each other and to the world you love for his sake as we join our voices with his followers all around the world, praying together the words he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us join our hearts and voices together now as we sing our concluding hymn of worship, 763, to show by touch and word. Let us go now to praise God with our hearts, to see the imagination of God in every moment of creation, in every person we meet in the days to come. Let us go now to praise Jesus with our very lives, to bring justice to those who are oppressed, to bring hope to those who live in despair and worry. Let us go now to praise the Spirit with our own lips, to speak peace into all the broken places of our communities to whisper grace to all those forgotten by the world. Peace and joy be with you all. Amen. Amen. 